Oh, go ahead and call the meeting to order. Um, we do have a quorum present. Um, and so we will, but we'll go around and do introductions so that folks know who is here. Uh, I'm Wayne Williams. I am an uh, at large member of Colorado Springs, Colorado Springs City Council and chair of the Pikes Peak RTA. I am Penn Commissioner Carrie Geithner, representing District 2 in the county. Oh, I'm not on. oh boy. Okay, start over. Um, county Commissioner Carrie Geithner. I represent District Two in the county and am the new Vice Chair of PPRTA. Uh, Lojinos Gonzalez, El Paso County Commissioner for District Four. Dennis Cartner, Mayor of Rama. John Graham, Mayor of Manitou Springs, the only city in El Paso County that deserves to have Springs as its last name. <laughs> <laughs> Roland Gardine, Rear Pro Tam of Callahan. No, looks like I should have worn a suit today. I'd say yes. Todd Dixon, Mayor of Green Mountain Falls. Lisa Corey, I'm the finance manager for PPRTA. Rick Sonnenberg, Pikes Peak, R Pikes Peak RTA program manager. Andy Gunning, PPACG executive director. Jennifer Ivey, uh, legal counsel to PPRTA. Uh, Gail Sturdivant, City Engineer and Deputy Public Works Director for the City of Colorado Springs. Josh Palmer, El Paso County Engineer. I'm happy to go. Jared Verner, Public Information Officer here at PPACG. Holly Williams, County Commissioner for Northern El Paso County. Uh, Dolly Montana, PPACG Admin. Carol Richards, PPACG Office Manager. Josiane Godfrey, Chair of the CAC. Larry Kahn, First Vice Chair of the CAC. They're not on that. Acting Transit Services Manager. Randy Mayor Fountain. Randy Helms, Colorado Springs City Council member, District 2, and you have Yolanda online. Okay, uh, members online. Is it my turn? Yes, ma'am, it's your turn now. Oh, okay, thank you. I'm Yolanda Avila, yeah, and I'm on uh, virtual, and I am on City Council, District 4. Okay, uh, anyone else online and wishes to introduce themselves? Hi, this is Scott Trainer and Todd Evans with uh, City of Fountain. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Anybody else? See some other names there, which people are welcome because we see your name, so we know who's here. Um, let's go ahead then. There is an agenda that was submitted to the board. Are there any corrections to it? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve the agenda? Also move, Mayor Dixon. I'll second John Graham. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Carries unanimously. Brings us to item three on the agenda, which is public comment period for items not on the agenda. So if you're here to discuss something that is on the agenda, we'll give you an opportunity to speak at that time. Uh, is there anyone who wishes to address items that are not on the agenda? Not hearing or seeing anyone. Uh, we'll move on, close public comment, and move on to item four. Uh, the minutes were sent in advance. Are there any changes to the minutes or corrections? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved, Commissioner Williams. Second, Mayor Dixon. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the agenda, to approve the minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Carries unanimously. Brings us to our Citizen Advisory Committee monthly report. Take it away, sir. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair and members of the board. Uh, Jim Godfrey, Chair of the CAC. Uh, meeting on Wednesday uh, of last week, um, we <clears throat> uh, looked at and discussed 15 contracts for the city. Uh, no contentious. A lot of them are uh, materials, contracts for annual purchases for gravel and chip seal, that kind of thing. So Gail did a good job of going over all the construction projects, and we recommend approval as presented to the CAC. The Paso County had seven contracts, same thing, some material contracts, and also 
project contracts. Josh did a great job of describing what's going on. Documentation, uh, I'll just say and for both of these people, um, for the city and the county and for the others that come forward, uh, we really appreciate the increased documentation and details, maps, and those kind of things that helps us relate to those projects well. So just wanted to publicly thank the, the effort that the staff's put in for that. We appreciate it. Um, maintenance of effort reports. We reviewed, received, and reviewed the maintenance of efforts for all six member governments, and uh, they're all in compliance um, to include Calhan and Rama, which have different dates. The dates have been updated, if you remember, to their now 2017. So um, just wanted to make that comment. Uh, City of Colorado Springs brought forward a request to revise budget poly policy number 12. Um, some of you may know that there is a change order limit that it's above a certain change order amount. They have to come to the CAC to get approval or to the CAC and the board to issue those change orders. For some of the larger projects, that amount is set so low that they would be coming back frequently and the change orders are in the several hundred thousand in some cases. And so they come forward and petition a change to that policy. Um, all of the changes that the board has approved in the past are all recorded and listed in the policy. So as you look at that policy, if you see a bunch of projects, those are the ones that have asked for and received waivers in the past. So we looked at that and we recommend the city's, we recommend a recommendation to approve the city's request for that. Uh, we also received a, an update and a briefing on I-25 Tejo Nevada ramp project. You may remember about a year or so ago, they did a traffic study uh, in that area. And uh, so they came back and gave us an update, a real nice briefing uh, on um, on that project and what's going on and kind of where they are in that process. And we appreciated that update. Um, the same thing with the Academy reconstruction project and the Circle Drive bridges. Um, we got an update on those as well. So you'll see those uh, two huge projects that have huge implications for traffic impact around the, around the region. So, um, and then you won't see it today, but we did begin discussion on a policy for what is completely funded uh, as we move into the final couple of years. Um, and before you can move to the B list, you've got to have completely funded projects. We're trying to define that um, and solidify that. Uh, and so um, you won't see it today. We had a good discussion. We're going to continue that and hopefully we'll uh, be able to come to something at our March meeting, but there's not real time sensitive. So we want to make sure we make a good and have a thorough discussion and everybody wasn't on the same page. So we're going to re-engage with that. So other than that, um, I'll be glad to answer any questions. Are there any questions? Roland. That's a draft board policy number 32 that you were talking about? Yes. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Just an explanation. We did not get to the fully funded until the very end with Pikes Peak RTA 1. So Pikes Peak RTA 2, we will get to the B list. And so we need to have what our process is, which yeah. makes it a little different. The problem that I'm seeing with the draft is there are things in there that that are pretty much cost prohibitive to small towns. And that is going to be a big problem for us. Yeah. Okay. Um, and just um, uh, as Chairman Williams uh, pointed out, um, at the end of RTA 1, um, the, the, pro the process was as we, as you finished and fully funded your projects, the remaining funds went into a pool. And then if you needed additional money, you came and petitioned for money to extract from that pool. Um, the consensus is not to do that this time. Uh, that's where we're headed in the discussion is to do something different. Um, so, uh, we want to hash this out, discuss it among ourselves before we come to a recommendation. Yes, question. Do any of the smaller jurisdictions have Category A projects in Pikes Peak RTA 2 that are not completely done? I'm not aware of it. I'm not aware of any at this time. Okay. And I'm not sure about it. The other. No, I believe everything was completed uh, prior to the deadline. 
Yeah, I, I think all of the remaining projects are in El Paso County and Colorado Springs. So on the so on their side, is that I see Gail with a can you Gail Sturgeon City, Colorado Springs. I actually think Manatee Springs does have a, an active project. Um, it's a transit shuttle project. And they came and you got an increase um, in your allocation that you were going to be covering costs in 23 24, as I recall. Anyway, that might be and for that. I, I would still. Say though, even though it's a pending project, even though it's a pending project, you're likely completely funded based on the request that you yeah. put out. Yeah. So Jim, thank you very much you're for welcome. the report. Any but, further questions or comments? Is there a motion to? Oh, yeah. Motion to accept the report. So moved. All second, Mayor Dixon. Motion has been made and seconded to accept the report. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Carries unanimously. Uh, so one of the downsides with a rotating second Wednesday of the month is sometimes that falls on the 8th, which means that Lisa's report will be somewhat shorter than otherwise <laughs> might be the case. Yes, December sales and use tax reports are not yet made available to me. Um, so I have nothing to report today, but as soon as they're made available, I will be emailing out my financial report. Okay. And the state usually issues it the 9th or 10th? Uh, last month was the 10th. So. And since we're on the, since we're meeting on the 8th, it's not available. So, um, but thank you for that. And then I, I think Lisa, you do feel comfortable that we'll meet the revenues needed to meet the budget. Is that correct? Unofficially, yes. Okay, very good. Okay. Brings us to item seven, which is the City of Fountain's consideration of joining the Pikes Peak RTA. And Rick Sonnenberg is going to lead us off here. Just kicking it off. So yes, uh, the PPRTA staff has been approached by uh, the staff and um, board members, council members, mayor, of City of Fountain, uh, indicating that they are uh, somewhat serious or th they can uh, come up with a better adjective, uh, maybe very serious. And, and Mayor Sharon Thompson is here and uh, City Administrator uh, Scott Trainer is on, on Zoom on, online. So they can <clears throat> define where they are, but we've been approached by them and uh, they've expressed an interest in <clears throat> joining the PPRTA possibly with them going to their voters this November, November 23, which would be a vote of their constituents, their voters to join. Then the, the, the vision is that the following November, November 24, is when uh, we would go to all of the PPRTA voters to add the Fountain Capital Projects. Uh, similar to the process that we did in 2017, when we went to all of our voters to add the one I-25 gap project that the voters approved on a two-to-one margin. So that's my kickoff. So, uh, Mr. Chair, if you want to see if uh, the city administrator or the mayor would like to address the board, I think that'd be the next step. Well, I'll defer first to Mayor Thompson if you wanted to address us. Then I also know we've got an at-large member of city council and we also have your staff. So tell us what order you'd like well, to speak in. You know, the best thing to always do is defer to staff, right? Because then you don't get yourself in trouble. We are, yeah, we've been investigating this for a long time. Um, we found had a variety of reasons over the years for not joining RTA. Uh, we looked at it last year. Uh, we had two, we did a survey uh, for two ballot measures, one on public safety and one on this, uh, with the people um, after the education part of the survey uh, by 70% overwhelmingly said they supported both measures going to the ballot. However, when they were surveyed to ask if you would vote yes on both of them, if they were on the ballot at the same time, only 30% said yes. So we had to make a choice last year and we voted to go with the public safety measure, which did pass. So that's great. It's going to have us have six additional police officers and firefighters for our city to, to take care of that and I think as we all know that's super important right now so then the question becomes do you just look at that survey and 
take the results a year later. And of course, the, things have changed greatly in the economy and stuff going on. So we are going back to do a, another survey with our citizens um, and, you know, to see um, what their thoughts are this year on it and where they're at right now. They're comfortable on it and proceeding down, proceeding down that path. Um, Scott, do you have anything additional to add? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I'll just add real briefly. First of all, I want to say a, a huge uh, shout out of appreciation to Rick, Jennifer, Andy. They've they've really been great at helping us get information as we've kind of walked through this process, what it would look like, et cetera. So the last request to, to Andy and the team was, hey, we really need to be able to talk to our folks about the process, step one, step two, step three. So can you help us out with that? Which is where we are now with this request, if we can... Um, if the PPRTA board decides that that we're they're comfortable with us moving forward with this, then um, Andy and his team will help us put together the process, kind of step by step, so we can work with our city council. Um, we've got our Magellan strategies that will be starting shortly on a community survey for us, and, and um, we're just really excited to move forward with you guys. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, anything else from? Council, I Any don't want to exclude council members. We think they're really important. Right. <laughs> yeah, we just, you know, we're just trying to gather all the information so we have all the facts, right? Okay. All right. Any questions? Or... Um, I don't see any right now, but let me turn it over to our council to kind of walk a little bit through the process. I think you've got. Yeah. So I'll start a pile going this way. Um, but what we have here is I, I did put together and it wasn't in your meeting packet because it was still being finalized. Um, the process for inclusion of the city in, of Fountain, if that's the route that things move forward. This is largely the same as what the board has seen with Calhan uh, just two years ago, I guess is when that timeline came out. So not a lot of changes. We've added some additional notice um, and just follow up items to make sure records are updated. Um, but otherwise, this really follows the same type of timeline, just fast forwarded to 2023. Um, so as you'll see, the first step in the process is really approval by the city council of Fountain by a majority vote to request being added as a new party to the IGA and adding their territory to the city. Sorry to interrupt. Is there a way to share that electronically with um, the Fountain with Yolanda and on our board and with the uh, folks from Fountain? I'm sure that there is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> who, who should I email it to? Jay, Jay Verner. Okay. So she's going to send it to her public information officer and then he will send that out to Yolanda and to uh, the Scott Trainer and uh, Todd Evans there at Fountain so that they have it as we're going through it. Yes. Mr. Chairman, while that's going on, I have a quick question. I can't remember. It's just the town of Fountain that votes to join, right? City of Fountain, yes. This, I'm sorry. Town of Callahan voted the city of Fountain. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, so they would vote whether to join. Um, and then we would have to have a vote of all of the Pikes Peak RTA to add capital projects. And that would take place the following year. If they vote no, then we don't have to deal with that other part. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to, since we were talking about it, I wanted their staff to be able to see what it is we were talking about. So Jennifer. Well, this is very similar to, they have the Callahan version. So if they have the Callahan version in front of them already, this looks very, very similar. Okay. Um, okay. But fast forward to two years. Um, so it really does start with what we request. First step is under the IGA, uh, getting the city council to, by majority vote, request to be added to the IGA and have the territory included. Um, from a timing standpoint, we've assumed that the city of Fountain would move with a November, move forward with a November 2023 Tabor election and joining election. Um, we did note in here, we obviously defer to the city's legal counsel to verify that as a home rule municipality, that that is the appropriate election date for them to hold those elections. Um, but assuming that that is accurate, this keys to that date and starts with that request to join prior to June 2023. Um, that would sort of kick off the formal process, if you will. Um, once that formal request is submitted to the PPRTA board, 
there's really no requirement for the PPRTA board to take any action as a, this board. Um, really, the next formal step contemplated under the IGA, the establishing IGA, is that the member governments, so each of your local jurisdictions, would have to unanimously consent to them joining. Um, but as we did with Calhan, it seems to be inappropriate. To clarify, all of them must agree, but they don't have to do it by unanimous votes. Is that correct? Unanimous consent by two thirds. Yes. No, sorry, just majority. Okay. So unanimous in terms of number of jurisdictions. Yep. But you can have a divided vote at the jurisdiction as long as the majority approve. That is correct. Okay. Thanks. Yes. Sorry, there is one. It's um, amendment to the IGA that requires a two-thirds vote. Um, uh, so it just seems to make sense to us that the next step would be for this board to sort of endorse referring it to the member governments and support being supportive of the city joining. So we've built that in like we did with Calhan. Um, so the next up, um, Chairman Williams keeps skipping one step ahead of where I'm at. So A4 is the unanimous consent from all the present members of PPRTA by majority vote of their governing bodies. Um, again, there's no requirement for when this has to happen. This could happen after the city approves joining, um, but it just seems to make sense that the city wouldn't want to move forward with the cost of an election unless they knew they had the unanimous consent. So we had that slated in for June through August of 2023. Um, then, as I mentioned, keying to a November 7th, 2023 election, that would be the next step. Uh, of course, we'll work closely with the city to make sure that their legal counsel agrees that that would be the appropriate election date. And then after that, we would go through the inclusion hearing portion, um, assuming that that vote is successful. This body, this board of directors, would then need to have a public hearing considering the inclusion of the territory. That would happen after mailed notice, published notice. There'd be a public hearing to consider whether the territory would be included. Um, so this just outlines those steps. That mailing has to occur 20 days before the hearing occurs. Um, once that public hearing would be held, uh, we have that slated for December 13th. This board, by a two-thirds majority vote, would then have to approve a resolution including the property. And then that resolution gets filed with the county, the state, and other entities and DOR um, to finalize the inclusion process, and that inclusion would then be effective January 1, 2024. Um, the added notice steps are detailed in B6 through B9 that I was mentioning. And then we added a couple of other things, clarifying at the end that uh, we would need the written notification of the City of Fountains representatives to the CAC and this board um, prior to the January 3rd, 2024 CAC meeting and January 10th, 2024 PPRTA board meeting. And then as Rick mentioned, um, I think the current thinking is that the city would want to have capital projects added to the list under the IGA and the ballots. Um, they're not eligible for capital projects until the next go around of PPRTA, which would be PPRTA 4. We're presuming that the city of Fountain isn't going to be quite that patient on getting capital funds. And so we would have some more paperwork to do to um, amend that provision, I believe, in the IGA, and then also go back to the electors in November of 2024 if the board wished to amend the capital projects list to add capital projects. Thank you. Any questions for our council from the board? Not. Oh, uh, yeah, will we be given like a uh, sample, uh, I don't know, ordinance or whatever it is we need to vote on at the municipalities? Um, so it's, yeah, it's just a, a adoption. It can be by motion second, but yeah, I mean, that's, we're happy to work with your local jurisdictions okay. on the form and we track all of that and make sure we have the information minutes or a resolution. However, the local yeah, body be a resolution. Yeah. To take it back. Not an ordinance. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. We try, I try not to get into telling if you, if it's a resolution or a note in the minutes or an ordinance, I leave that to your local <clears throat> jurisdiction, but we do make sure that we get all of those and put them in our files. Okay. Sure. Other questions from the board? Not seeing any, any questions from the City of Fountain on that. Okay, we've got it. So at least as I understand the process, the next step 
would be for the uh, City of Fountain City Council by majority vote to request to be added as a new party and a new member to add that. So the contemplation is by June of 2023. And then, uh, so we're at the stage where we await your will. Um, and uh, I got the thumbs up from the mayor back there, so they understand the ball's in their court now. But I, I appreciate, Jennifer, you putting this together, both for uh, Fountain, but also so folks have in writing what that procedure is, because I think that's it's useful to put it out, because it is somewhat of a complicated process, um, but it's important to, to follow it so that the law is complied with. And, uh, and, and I guess, lest we go too far down this road, is there, I'm going to, it's not, is there serious opposition or concern with adding one of our neighbors to this organization? I see none. So, well, I, I will have some comments. I think that we've worked really hard as a region to combine all of our projects. So I think it's very valuable to add them in. Um, I do believe in the sales tax perspective, whereas Monument, if they'd come in, they would be a giver. I don't know where Fountain Falls on the sales tax percentage, but I think that uh, for the purpose of regionality, I would love to have them come in. And I know as we look at, I know one of the county projects is the design and right-of-way acquisition for Power South, and that certainly has a significant impact uh, with respect to the city of Fountain. And so I, I think that makes sense. Um, and I'll note that some of Fountain already is in the Pikes Peak RTA uh, because the boundaries were set at the time the Pikes Peak RTA was created. And so to the extent Fountain and Monument have annexed property, that property still remains within the Pikes Peak RTA. And so that is, so having them with a seat at the table, I think does make some sense in that aspect as well. So, Council. I'm just going to add one other thing. I mean, this is key to, I said, as you mentioned, June, 2023, um, the sooner the better. I'm not saying we couldn't do it if we received it later than June, 2023, but I, I think that was a comfortable process that we went forward with the town of Callahan where nobody you know, was rushing or worried about timing. So um, that's sort of a, ideal end date but if we receive the request sooner it gives us even more time to work through it so okay i see the mayor understands that they of course have processes and votes they have to go through and uh, the analysis of whether it makes sense yeah and, and i agree i'm very supportive of bringing the regional any and all the, of the regional folks into the fold as we can okay um, i think that's just to me that's just a win-win for the whole front range area Okay. And we do send a lot of uh, individuals from Colorado Springs down to that army base down there. What? <laughs> yep. Okay. Very good. Anything else on this item on the agenda? So thank you for the discussion. Thank you for your interest. And you're welcome to hang around for the whole meeting if you wish, or you can take off because I know you're busy. Okay. Bye. Took care of item seven. It brings us to item eight, uh, which are the capital maintenance and public transportation contracts. And in this case, the CAC has given their recommendation for approval. So are there, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask something and uh, get the guidance of the board, right? So we have two options. Some boards I've been on have done it one way, some have done it another way. One is to say, <coughs> Actually, there's kind of three, or we can pick something up. One is a full presentation on each of the things, which is what we've typically done. Another is to say, are there any ones that people have questions on since the packet was provided ahead of time and the CAC has approved? And the kind of the middle of the road is, are there any ones you think that you want to bring particular attention to, Gail or Joshua, as we go through? And so I'm asking the preference of the board uh, because it is in our packet. We have that information available. And I am fine to go with either direction, but I want to get your guidance as to how we approach these. 
I think I'd be comfortable with uh, handling it as a package and, and just adopting it. But uh, if someone wants to discuss things in detail, I'm not opposed to that. Okay. I concur. I think we handle it as a package. Okay. So let me, uh, so you've got the city of Colorado Springs uh, contracts there in front of you, many of which are renewals, which is one of the reasons I thought it made sense to ask this today. Gail, is there anything in there you want to call our attention mm -hmm. to in particular? I will just mention uh, the one contract here, it's contract number three, that it's going to be for those interim improvements at Mark Shuffle and Dublin. I know we've been talking a lot about the Mark Shuffle corridor, but as you mentioned, most of these are like change orders or modification or um, extensions for other work. But I'd be happy to answer any other questions if anyone has any. Okay. Are there any questions for Gail on those questions? I'm not trying to stop you. I, I want you to tell us about important things like that. <laughs> but each, uh, you know, we have that, we have the information, and, and I appreciate that. Is there a motion then? Seeing no questions. Randy Helms make the motion to approve. Mayor Dixon second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Carries unanimously. Brings up. Brings us to El Paso County Capital Maintenance and Public Transportation Contracts. Josh, anything you want to call our attention to? Uh, not necessarily. The first five are just PO renewals for materials. I would at least like to point out uh, numbers five and six, um, just because of the impacts that they have to Highway 105. And just to highlight, uh, these are, well, one's a reimbursement and one's a property acquisition, but it just highlights the fact that we're in the home stretch at least for phase A and phase B <laughs> for Highway 105, um, but uh, nothing significant, no. Okay, thanks. Any questions for Joshua and any of the El Paso County proposed contracts? Seeing none, is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Carries unanimously, thank you. Brings us to the City of Colorado Springs Transit Services Monthly Update, item 9A on the agenda. Thank you. Good afternoon, Lan Rao, Acting Transit Services Manager. Um, in your packet is our monthly report with the monthly breakdown of the ridership. We wrapped up the year with a little over 2.3 million trips provided combined um, on our system. With that, 2.2 million trips occurred on the fixed route and over 107,000 from ADA, Metro Mobility Services. This number represents about 20% increased ridership over 2021 level, although it is still about 68% compared to 2019 pre-pandemic. Towards the back of your report is a table that we brought to the board it's a ridership comparison on the transit routes that ran at the same frequency during 2022 compared to 2019 pre-COVID. We updated the report with 2022 actual ridership. As you can see, it's about 72% of ridership on the same transit routes that ran at the same frequency. This month, we also included a table showing some transit routes at reduced frequency and the, what the ridership looked like on those transit routes. With the reduced frequency, there is about 58% ridership that occurred on these transit routes compared to 72% with the same level of frequency. So if you remember last month, our we really could not draw the conclusion between the frequency and ridership, but we think with these two table combined, even if there is no clear causal effect of bus frequency on ridership, but we can clearly see some correlation there. Um, so hopefully these two tables gave you some more information um, between the supply and demand. No, I, I very much appreciate y'all adding that additional information because I, I do think it's important for us to, to do that. How are we doing on drivers? We are very happy to report. <laughs> it's actually um, uh, a little lower on the report on this page. Number four, MMT new fixed route contract update. 
we transitioned to a new contractor and um, their name is Transdev. Um, they are basically the operator operating our entire system, ADA and uh, local fixed route at this point. February 1st was this transition date. And on the first day, we were able to restore eight bus routes um, on the first day. And we saw 30 plus drivers coming back on the first day, and we were able to restore additional services on the weekend as well. We are very hopeful that we don't want to overpromise at this point because there, are, there is natural attrition um, with the contractor staff. But currently, we, uh, we need 155 drivers to provide the full level of service, and we currently have 142. So we're getting close. Uh, we're 13 drivers short, but we also have 21 drivers in training. They don't, not everyone will graduate the class, but we normally can not expect about 50% graduation rate. So we're very hopeful um, and hoping to provide and restore our full service, hopefully by the next board meeting. Okay, yeah. excellent. I'm glad that that's working. So thank I you. I think you also had a question about um, how, how we hold contractors uh, accountable. Uh, we do have liquidated damage in our contract provision um, from late buses to missed trip to early arrival to preventable accidents. So this contract does include that. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Welcome. Wayne, may I make yes. a comment? Yes, Council Member Avila. Sorry, I haven't figured out how to raise my hand. Um, this is fabulous news, you know, with the, we're going on almost three years now and um, the fact that it's all under one contractor and all those drivers came back or was several of them. And I know you don't want to overpromise, but this is exceptional news. And I'm going to say that we're probably not at, we're at 72% on the where we've gained frequency or we're back to the frequency we had before. And I would say we'd probably be higher if the other routes that don't have the same frequency, such as at the 58%, because of the transfers. So if you have a frequency uh, restored, a 15 minute frequency, but yet on another one that hasn't res been restored and you're still waiting another half hour or an hour, then that could impact um, why we're at 72 and not you know, at 100 or, or more than that. So. Uh, I'm really excited about this report and I'm looking forward to a lot more ridership from even maybe my fellow board members. Thank okay. you. Thank you. A question. Mayor you, Carpenter. Said, you said when you got these drivers back, where did they go to, to come back? I mean, did... well, we had experience towards the end of the last contract, uh, a lot of driver call off for whatever reasons and uh, we saw a large number of drivers calling in for personal reasons, not reporting uh, to work due to the contract transition. We, we were working closely with the contractors and they, um, what I learned was on the first day, they actually brought additional operators from other cities just to be on standby in case um, they were needed. So they, they really are doing a great job. Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much for the Thank report. Uh, maintenance, maintenance of effort reports, as was uh, mentioned in the CAC report, we have these are different than past years because we are now dating back to 2017. That was one of the board resolution changes. And as the CAC reported, all of those were successful in meeting the maintenance of effort. Uh, even with the updated dates. And so Rick's got the support, the report here. Anything else you wanted to add, Rick? Okay. Any uh, questions on these? Uh, this is an important part of the commitment we made to the voters is that we would continue the funding. This was uh, an additional funding that would be provided. And uh, I am glad to see that all of those jurisdictions have met that even with the revised number. So because this is a part of our commitment to the voters, we do have this as an approval item. Is there a motion to approve the maintenance of effort reports? So Mayor, moved. I'll second. Mayor Dick. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 
Any opposed, nay. Carries unanimously. Brings us to item C. And if you think I'm moving along, but I'm cutting you off on something, please feel free to let me know. I'm not trying to cut off or end any discussions. Um, and so I just emphasize that as, as I move along. So just catch my attention like Yolanda did. I, uh, I'm not personally not used to government meetings being run fast. Mm -hmm. So it is taking me a bit to keep up, but I'll get there. <laughs> okay, brings us to item 9C. City of Colorado Springs request revised board policy number 12. Gail, you want to briefly talk about what this is? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, uh, Gail Servant, City of Colorado Springs. As Mr. Godfrey mentioned, uh, we have board policy 12, which it has a modification to the change order rules for larger construction contracts. Uh, the city has had several contracts put, placed on this uh, underneath this policy in the past. We're asking for your permission to place four contracts there. Um, it's for the Black Forest Road improvements, uh, the north segment of Academy Boulevard from Bijou to airport, the south segment of Academy Boulevard from Fountain and Milton Proby Parkway and the Circle Drive Bridge Rehabilitation Projects. Uh, the language that would be added to the memo or to the policy 12 is written in quotations down below and it will change the threshold to uh, would raise the change order threshold where it have to come back for board approval to $100,000 or 10% of the aggregate um, amount of the contract, whichever is less, the lesser of the two. Okay. So this has been done on a number of large projects. I did ask um, Jim if he would have the CAC look at the general concept of, I know we've got a 25,000 policy and then exceptions, does it make sense to do a sliding scale of some sort? Uh, and so I asked the CAC to look at that going forward. And uh, when they get time, they'll take a look at it. But in the meantime, uh, any discussion? Seeing none, is there a motion with respect to- Wait, this? hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Yolanda. Because um, I wanted the update right on uh, the South Academy Boulevard when we were going to start construction, but what are we doing here? Are so we... this, this is the, normally change orders have to come in front of the board if they're more than 25,000 as we're going through. In larger projects, change orders in excess of that capacity are fairly frequent. I get and, that. So is that come, the change order coming into this project or out? So, Gail, if you want to address that. Well, I, I think that uh, Councillor Avila is most interested in item 9G on the agenda, where I'm going to give her an update on the construction progress for the two South Academy projects and Circle Drive Bridges. And this is we're focusing on policy 12, which is not an actual change order to either of those contracts at this point in time. It's just establishing the change order thresholds that requires the city to come back and obtain board approval. So that... this this is anticipating there will be change orders in the future and getting permission to go up to 100,000 as opposed to the 25,000 that was in there normally. That, that's correct. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you for helping me understand. Appreciate it. And ultimately this helps the project to go faster. Yes, that is the intent. Because otherwise, you might have a contractor who wants to wait for the approval of the money before they do it. That could delay it. Yep. Roland. Yeah, uh, Roland Gardine. Thank you, sir. Uh, so we're still talking about A and B. We're still talking about these are contracts on A. Yes, these are all, all of these projects are on the PPRTA A list. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Any further discussion? Now seeing none. Mayor so Dixon, I'll move. We approve. Okay. Is there aye, a second? Aye. Roland Gardeen, front and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed day? Passes unanimously. Uh, brings us to the City of Colorado Springs monthly change order and property acquisition report. Uh, this was in the packet, I think page 107. Uh, anything you want to call attention to, Gail, here? I'm nothing of a particular interest, Mr. Chair. Any questions from the board on this item? Is there a motion to, right, this is an information item. So um, 
It's just a report. So we have the same thing from El Paso County. Joshua, anything you wanted to call our attention to on item E? Uh, just on our property acquisition report, you'll notice that the for Highway 105, the McGuire Living Trust property acquisition, that was actually an item that was approved last month. So we just waited for the approval to add it to the log for this month. So that's nothing new. It's what was approved last month. Okay. Any questions on the county's order, change order and property acquisition report? Seeing none. Uh, brings us to item F, which is the City of Colorado Springs update of the I-25 Tejon Nevada Ramps project. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd be happy to go over this, but last month you did say you wanted this for informational only because the CAC asked for it. Um, and unfortunately, my project manager is unable to be present at, to do the presentation. So if you'd like me to go through it, I'd be happy to. If you'd like me to move on to the next one, I would be more than happy okay. to do that as well. So the information is provided to us. Are there any questions on this particular project? Okay, seeing none. We will then move on to item G, which I know there are, is some interest in. So on this yeah. one, we would like a presentation, yeah. which is the City of Colorado Springs update of Academy Reconstruction Project and the Circle Drive Bridges Projects. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair Gail Sturdivant again. Um, uh, Councillor Avila asked for this information last month, so I put this together in a slide presentation, and I'll walk through it. Um, if you could go to the next slide, please, Jared. Um, so I'm going to start with Academy Boulevard first. This is the north segment. It runs from Airport Road to Bijou. It's a 0.89 mile segment. We are currently have a construction contract with Ames Construction to complete this work, and they are diligently working on pre-construction activities, along with um, pre-construction activities that are being completed by Colorado Springs Utilities. Colorado Springs Utilities focus has been at the airport and academy intersection where they've been doing gas line relocation and water line replacement. Um, Ames and our, our prime contractors working on potholing construction survey and starting to set barriers in that area. Future activities for this project are going to be um, including full depth replacement of the pavement in that area. Gail, well, may I interrupt you a second? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, because uh, it has the intersection of um, uh, as you're going east toward power on airport road that's been closed for a couple of months so that's been oh, well several months that's been utilities so my question is that once that uh, those pipes are laid and is that going to open again or is that going to stay closed all the way through uh, the construction from well i guess that's where it starts from the north yeah. segment of uh, south academy to uh, the south segment of south academy um, Council, does that make I believe, sense? I, it does, and unfortunately, I don't know that I have the exact answer. I would think that it would likely be open when that's done because the construction contract, our prime contractor, is anticipating mobilizing this whole until he's doing actual work in the intersection. He would not need to close it, and unfortunately, I'm not aware if he's starting um, from on the south end and working his way north, or starting on the north end and working the way south. Mine, if I recall correctly, he's starting on the south end, so he'll be closer to Bijou and then working up towards the airport, but I could be incorrect about that. Um, but I could get an update for you outside of this uh, meeting and give you more specifics and when we anticipate that intersection being open. Great, I would really appreciate that. Sorry, I'm you, writing myself you, a note. I'll do it as long as I remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and then uh, just the, that project, and this will be similar to what's going on in the south segment. Again, it's full depth asphalt. We're also going to be adding a sidewalk and shared youth path with that um, project. Uh, we're going to be doing intersection improvements along that corridor, in particular with airport and Bijou, where we're going to have new uh, traffic signals. We're also going to be improving signing, striping. We're adding street lighting in this area as well, because it's fairly dark and we have a lot of pedestrian and bike users in that area and transit routes. So that's going to be a great add. And there's going to be some other utility work that will happen in conjunction with the with the um, the rest of the road reconstruction. If you could go to the next slide, please, Jaron. I'm going to move to the south segment, which runs from Jetwing to Fountain, um, and this is a 2.37 mile segment. Um, also, Ames is our primary contractor for that, and they're they're doing some pre-construction activities there, mostly potholing, construction surveying in that area. One of the things the contractors really have with us, we have some outstanding property acquisition going on in this area as well, um, but we anticipate that being resolved um, as we get towards construction. And the, the 
it's a delayed schedule between the projects. Um, and again, full reconstruction of the pavement, um, major intersection um, improvement, signing striping, new signals, street lighting. There's a potable water line relocation, and um, we're going to be improving the pedestrian railing over that Sand Creek Bridge adjacent to, or as you go over Sand Creek there on Academy Boulevard. You can go to the next slide. So I'm going to talk about the schedule. So I mentioned they, they're both in pre-construction. The north segment is anticipated to start construction in the February time timeline, assuming that intersection is done um, and the weather is continuing to hold. Uh, they're going to, there's going to be a public information meeting held on February 16th at 5 p.m. Um, to, to really inform stakeholders in that area what's going to be happening over the next couple of years in that area. And again, mobilize in May and then anticipated to be uh, done with construction at the end of 2024. The south segment is anticipated to start construction uh, in the March timeframe and to be complete in April 2025. Uh, on the Circle Drive bridge replacement, um, we do have a construction contractor in place for that as well right now. Um, overall, that project's going to be replacing the four aged bridges um, on Circle Drive that go over Fountain Creek and Pikes Peak Greenway and uh, Las Vegas Street and the railroad structures. Um, and then we're also going to have some uh, water line uh, relocation, and we're going to be widening Hancock Expressway underneath these new bridges as well with some traffic um, program funds in that area. Next schedule. All right, next. Um, so the schedule, we're talking about ongoing pre-construction activities. So we, um, this, because with the railroads involved in this, we've got our construction contractor on board right now. We're actually working on a three-party construction and maintenance agreement that, that, that the parties are the city, BNSF Railways, and Union Pacific. But we need our construction contract to be on board because everything we agree to it needs to be consistent with what they're going to be have to do in the field. Um, we have, uh, we're successfully working through that draft. It, it's just taking time to go through that. Um, the contractor is starting to work on submittals, shop drawings, and starting to procure long lead items to include that water line that I mentioned previously. Um, we're anticipated to start establishing a uh, traffic control around those bridges in the February timeframe and doing site clearing and stabilization March, April timeframe. And then they anticipate drilling the first um, bridge shaft, drill pier shafts um, uh, this year in the first half of this year. Um, overall, um, there's a there's some graphic that shows kind of the phasing of the project. Oh, can you leave it there for just a moment? There's a graphic shown on the area, but we're going to be doing construction in, in uh, three phases, uh, phase one, two, and three. The first one is we're going to be constructing a new bridge or a new eastbound bridge south of the two existing bridges. Um, and then when that's done, then we'll be demolish, demolishing the current westbound bridge and then um, putting a new bridge at that location, then demolishing the existing eastbound bridge. And then the last slide does show a graphic that kind of shows that phasing. So you can see where um, a future eastbound bridge is going to be south of where it's currently located. The westbound bridge will be in its uh, existing location, but be replaced. And then the current eastbound bridge will be demolished. So that completes the update on where we are in construction for those three projects. Um, I now open it up for questions there. So I'll ask Yolanda first. Do you have any questions, ma'am? I really, truly appreciate that update. Um, but I'm just looking for a bottom line. When are we going to shovel in? Uh, at the? You're not sure if we're going to start from Airport Road. I'm talking the north end, right? Um, from yes. Airport Road to Bijou, or if it's going to go from Bijou to Airport Road. But I just want to see when are they going to break the ground and just kind of close off that road for the construction. And the maybe you said it, but I didn't catch it. No, um, they, they anticipate would be between February and March time frame, depending on the, the weather is what we're anticipating them have closed. And it's not anticipated to be full closure. You'll have lane reductions when they go through the area. The only time you'll have closures, they would be short term in the intersections related to the road work. Okay. okay, so we're in February, so it's within a, a week to a four weeks or five weeks, right? I would say a week to, to seven or eight weeks to get through in March. <laughs> okay, see, that's because I'll, in, a, in about a month, I'll be like, okay, what happened? So that's okay. good to know. So uh, thank you so much for the update. Yes, and I'll follow up with you about when we're anticipating that intersection uh, being open, so you're aware of that. Okay. And I'll find out their direction of 
construction. And okay, great. Question I'd have for you, since these are some of the larger projects in Pikes Peak RTA 2, are you planning a groundbreaking ceremony for either or both of these? I, I was not anticipating a groundbreaking for either of any of these three projects at this time. Okay. Okay. Uh, so Yolanda, if that's something you think we ought to do, um, then if let us know, please. Okay. I'll I'll see. I'll I'll get their advice too and recommendations. Maybe we'll do a ribbon cutting. I don't well, know. Well, I will mention there is that the really the kickoff in lieu of a, a field um ribbon or for a field groundbreaking we are having that public information open house really just whether and from a safety standpoint that's really the approach we took on this project um, so that is available and uh, council Avala, i do hope you have that on your calendar it is february february 16th at 5 p.m well i think i'll get that on my calendar great thank you and i will make sure i'll forward the invitation to you if you've not seen it yeah, I, I don't. I don't think the board's seen that. So if you can make sure it goes out, Thanks. great. Thank you very much. Any other discussion on item nine G? Seeing none, this brings us to Dan Javlan, who I see is online. Dan, are you able to provide us item ten A, our legislative report at this time? He is, and we see his smiling face. But you do need to unmute. I hear that very rarely. Most people like me muted. Um, <laughs> so I, it actually makes this a good day. Um, I, I will go quickly only because I have a severe case of bronchitis and can only speak in short bursts. Um, we're on day 30 of 120. Uh, the RTA is really tracking three bells, but one of interest, which was Senate Bell 2316, which is the greenhouse admission bell from Senator Hansen that got through the Senate, but got hung up in house appropriations last year. It's essentially the exact same bell that was going through the system. Um, it is now going to Senate finance on the 21st, which is next week, um, to talk about the fiscal impact of that. I think what I'm finding out <coughs> What's interesting now is each of the four caucuses are already starting to show splits and divides on, on, on certain bills and certain issues. And I thought they would at least be able to get to the budget before that happened, but that doesn't really seem to be happening. There seems to be quite a lot of inflight, fighting and disagreement within each caucus. Of the 300 bill, a little over 300 bills that have been introduced, there's a lot of tenant rights, a lot of scope battles between non-medical providers trying to become prescribers and do other things that people went to medical school for. It's a couple of mandate bills for health insurance companies. Um, the gun bills are certainly have a black cloud that is hanging over the, um, the capital where everyone's waiting for them. Um, and I think that you know, the budget is certainly the, the number one topic uh, being talked to behind closed doors because there just isn't money to go around for everything that a few that people are going to be asking for. I guess I'll I'll frame it that way. Um, but right now from the RTA, there's I've seen nothing on sales taxes. Um, I've gotten uh, I, I check the new bills every night. Um, so so. <laughs> <laughs> try to stay in contact with Jennifer and Rick every day on the every week on the bill stuff and have not got anything else that I think that we have severe concerns about at this time so I'm going to get a drink of water and stop for questions okay thank you very much Dan and uh you know I I I would say I I think all of us in local government understand the concept on a annual basis, at least, of not enough money to do everything we might want to do. Uh, so I'm not shocked that the legislature might have that issue as well. Um, and uh, it's just my hope they don't pass on a bunch of mandates to us to pick up where they're not funding. Uh, that's, what, that's my biggest fear. And 
they, they, they were used to getting all those federal dollars last year. So everybody that got that money is standing in line to try to keep their programs alive, which is just adding to the adding to the problem. Yep. I remember some discussions that we've had at various governments about whether to take federal funds if it's not sustainable. So yep. it is it is one of those challenges. So thank you, Dan, for the report. I don't. Roland, go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, how about uh, bill number 23-107? It's supposed to be hidden in the committee tomorrow or what? Dan, did you hear that one? Yeah, I'm looking it up right now. I, I had that, I had that on. Oh, 107. Yes, that is in committee tomorrow. In fact, I'll be testifying on that for Senator Liston. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, you yeah, that. Yeah, that. I will be testifying on behalf of the United Veterans on that bill. Um, so to see if we can give Larry a little bit of boost on that. Yes, that is in. Uh, that is in committee tomorrow at 1:30. I think there's four bills uh, assigned to that committee. Dan, for those who don't have all the numbers memorized, what bill is that? That is the uh, extending, right now there's a tax exemption up to 50% for seniors and disabled veterans. Um, I, I believe the number without looking at it in front of me, that goes up to two, for up to a house of 200, worth 200,000. That will bump that up to, I think, 300,000 for a, a bigger house. Also in that bill, for the seniors that sell their homes to try to downsize, they lose that exemption. So this bill will try to make that exemption portable for them as well. Okay. So, so it specifically targets helping senior citizens in the vet, disabled veteran community. Very good. Uh, Council Member Helms. Dan, I have a question on that bill. I, maybe I didn't hear it. Uh, in the bill, is there, are they changing the 10 year rule or not? They're, they're not. They're trying to change the dollar amount rule. Yeah, but not the 10 year rule. Okay, thank yes. you. Other than you would have it be portable. So if, once you meet the 10, you could then downsize and still keep it. So without having to go through a new 10 year period, which is the odd rule that's there now. Um, okay. Andy. And just for clarification, because we talked about this this morning, the portability is restricted this year in this year's version of the bill to medical conditions only. So you can't just decide that you want to downsize. You actually need certification from the state, we think, uh, to have a certified medical condition to be able to move out of your house and then keep that exemption. Andy, that, that's 100% correct. And I, I don't want to have any illusions seeing how I'm testifying on this bill for Larry. Um, this doesn't even have a coin flips chance of getting through committee tomorrow. <laughs> Always good to be realistic, I guess. I don't I don't want to set the bar too high, but um, you would think that this would be a no brainer, but I am, I think that Larry and I will be licking our wounds as we leave the table. Okay. Well, thanks for looking out for our Senator here. Uh, yeah. Other questions for Dan about legislative matters? Seeing none, Dan, thank you. We'll let you get some rest and hopefully recover quickly. Oh, yeah. I'm on like five different kinds of meds and three different kinds of wine, so I'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those, those were self prescribed. <laughs> the meds I actually got from a doctor. Now we're Thanks, gonna, everybody. Now, now we're going to have an advisory here from our health department. No. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate your work. Brings us to item 11, which are the Pikes Peak RTA member announcements. Are there any announcements from the membership? Seeing none. Uh, I don't hear with anything. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Oh, Rick, hold up. Just a reminder that after we adjourn, yeah, we will then get a picture taken <laughs> with your bright, smiling faces. And Dennis, thank you for keeping the bolo on. Sorry to, to okay. make you suffer like that. So 
All in favor of adjournment, please say aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Carries unanimously. We are adjourned. All right, here we go.